Hello everyone, this is uh, Jacob Owen, uh, Commercial Systems Engineer for Aruba. Um, I wanted to take some time today to go over uh, zero touch provisioning using central template groups. Um, template groups are a great way um, that if you have a large number of remote sites that have very cookie cutter designs, it allows us to uh, push out a template based configuration and then use specific variables for um, specific things like host name, SNP location, IP addressing, um, you know, things like that. But also, if you're utilizing a, um, like a policy manager like uh, ClearPass on the back end, even in a campus environment, it allows us to um, deploy switches in a zero touch fashion um, and automate the edge, you know, because we use a colorless ports design. So being able to specifically assign different VLANs to ports is not as, as crucial. Um, when you're do, letting ClearPass do the, uh, the downloadable user wall enforcement. Um, so the steps to do this, um, obviously we need a central account and we just need to switch that's managed by central. Um, but the most important thing that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to create what I call a golden config. So we're gonna take a switch out of the box, we're gonna pre-configure it with all the standard uh, policies that all the switches are gonna share in common. So those values could be things like, um, you know, your AAA policy. So my radius servers, um, you know, things, NTP, TACX, uh, daylight savings, your default gateway, uh, DNS, SNMP, and then of course your VLAN information. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these, the switch config and we're gonna pull it into um, central as a template. And by doing that, then we can um, uh, share that same configuration across multiple um, other switches that are brought into Central. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna create a new group. This is gonna be a new template group. A template group, it's gonna be a switch. We're gonna have to put a password in there. Uh, a group. Okay, so now as you can see here, we've got a, um, a switch in here. Um, the other thing is I've already taken and plugged in the uh, golden configured switch. And so it's actually appearing, because it has a configuration, it does not come into the default poly, uh, group within central. So if I took a switch out of the box, plugged it in, it would always go into the default group because um, there's no configuration on it. And central can actually detect that. When a pre-configured switch is connected to central, it actually comes into what we call an unprovisioned group. That means it's expecting you to put it in the, into the group that you want it to be in. So what we're gonna do is we'll come in here, that's the unassigned devices group. And as you can see here, here's the 2930F1, which matches the switch config we have right here. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna move this down to the template group. So what this does is it moves the configuration to the template group and allows us to then pull the configuration um, from that device into the template. So we're gonna go in here, load up switches, take a little here, and then we're gonna create a new template. So templates are based on device type as well as device uh, firmware. So um, if you have multiple firmware versions or different model types, you can actually create different templates for each type. Um, so we know this is a 2930F. We know it's version 16.10. We know that it is a 8G. So now that I put in those variables, it's actually, or those uh, pull downs, it's actually going to tell me what switches are available for uh, configuration importing. So in this case, it's only 2930F-1. So here we're actually going to import the template. So what this has done is this is actually pulling in the configuration from um, the switch and actually making it available. As you can see, anything here that can be variableized has been, things like this uh, system gateway or the IP default gateway, that's a variable. Um, the other thing we need to do is just to come down here and to make sure that we variableize the system IP address. Um, I'm not a big fan of using VLAN 1, so I always use my own VLANs um, for management. So what we'll do here is we'll create a new variable, anything that starts with the percent, mins of the percent is considered a variable from central standpoint. Um, we'll call this a system IP. And as you can see now, 
whenever we create a new uh, switch config, we will be able to um, call out the system IP. So whenever it pulls down its config, it'll know how to um, which config to pull. Okay, so now we can actually go in and we can see the variables. So these are actually the variables that it's pulling out of um, you know, from that switch. So what we can actually do is we can pull down my, my recommended way to uh, push out variables is via CSV file. So you actually can download it um, and then um, open that with, make sure to open it with Excel. As you can see, here's all the list of all the variables that are pulled from that. So anything that was variableized, like system gateway, system host name, anything like that is going to be shown here. The one thing to note is sometimes this is an Excel problem, not so much central. Um, it always likes to change the format of CSV files to um, date time instead of uh, uh, just text information. Um, So this is where we can make the changes. So if we had multiple switches that were already pre-assigned to this group, they would all appear down here and we could actually start pre-populating them um, you know, within this file. For example, um, I'm gonna go up here. I have another switch that's actually already online, but it is not, um, or it's actually already talked to Central, but it's not going to, it's offline currently. So I'm going to take that. It's in the default group because it came in without a config, and I'm going to push it down into the uh, template group file. So now when I go back in, you can actually see You can actually see that this new switch. So even though it's it's not online, but it's been added to the group, it's now available for me to start pre-populating information about the switch. That's how we can do zero touch provisioning. So if I had a hundred switches, I could literally have all hundred switches already predefined, and then whenever they connected to central, they would automatically pull down the template, and then they would use any of the variables that I've put in here. And anytime you make a change to the variable file, you can either, uh, you can change the modify to yes or no. Um, if you change it to yes, it will actually push down, push up the new variables. If you leave it at no, it won't overwrite them. Um, so I'm gonna save this, and now I'm going to upload the variables file. Okay, and now you can see we've got, um, So I've got that in there. So the template is now created. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, console into the other I'm gonna connect the second 2930F, which as I said has a default configuration. Actually it does yeah, it pulled down its uh, username and password from um, the group that it was in. We're gonna do a debug config restore because we're gonna watch it actually push the configuration down. Actually, do an activate provision. Oh, there it goes. Never mind. 
So this is actually, it has gone out, talked to Central, realized that it's in a template group, and it is now pushing down all of those configurations that we had already pre-populated. Uh, so when this is done, you'll probably, you will see the host name showing as 2930F-2. Um, and then what we'll be able to do from here is then start plugging in um, devices and actually seeing connectivity to um, uh, ClearPass being established. So um, I'm gonna plug in a few devices. And you can already see these devices are downloading their configuration from ClearPass or their, their roles from ClearPass. So this is how we could actually uh, roll out um, a zero touch provisioned edge um, policy across 100 sites. So literally the switches connect to the internet, they pull down their config from central, it then points across the network to talk to ClearPass to pull down its uh, policies. So there's really no um, human interaction here besides taking it out of the box and plugging it in at the remote site. Um, makes it very easy, no smart hands are needed. Um, but as you can see, um, I've got a Apple TV connected. I've got um, just a Windows device that's doing Mac auth, so therefore I'm doing a, a wired guest capture portal, um, as well as a access network camera. So this is all predefined, and as you can see, um, you know, there's no role information already predefined on the switch. Everything is coming down from ClearPass. And then as devices come in, they're assigned the different roles, which map to different VLANs. Um, and we even got an IP phone. So you know, this is a way we can automate um, you know, rolling out a large number of remote uh, devices. Um, you know, using ClearPass on the back end is key because this allows us to do a colorless ports model on our edge ports, meaning we don't have to put a configuration on there other than Mac authentication and .1x. ClearPass takes care of the rest. If it's a, um, like in the case of this wired guest user, it's actually going to get a um, captive portal downloaded from ClearPass to tell the user where to redirect the traffic to, or to tell the switch where to redirect the, the user traffic to so they can get a uh, captive portal login. Um, you know, this VoIP phone actually uses tagged VLAN, so we can actually set up and respond with a tagged VLAN name. Um, or in the case of the network camera or the Apple TV, you know, we can just respond with uh, a standard, you know, untagged VLAN name. But, but the real key here is to leverage VLAN names over VLAN IDs because that allows our policy to point to a single name and irregardless of what the VLAN ID is, the local switch will just look at the name and assign accordingly. So, you know, hope this was useful today. Um, as I said, this could be used, you know, on a site deployment of 100 switches, 1,000 switches, um, and as long as that, that information, the template is created in a golden uh, configuration fashion, meaning, you know, all of your settings that will apply to all of your switches commonly um, is predefined, then all we have to call out is the individual variable files like the host name, the SNMP location, uh, maybe time zone offset if you're in a you know, different time zone than the rest of the switches. Uh, and then using ClearPass on the back end, it automatically begins to download roles as devices connect. Um, so there's really not um, any interaction besides the pre-setup um, that IT has to do. And you know, rolling out these switches um, literally at the edge, you know, we don't have to determine what ports to plug in where. It's just a pretty much a free-for-all. You know, plug in anything wherever you want. It's going to get the correct access policy. Um, and go from there. So thanks and uh, we'll talk to you soon.